Hello guys, it's Algerdes with Quick Playing Tips. Today I'm going to give you a quick analysis of a video one of my subscribers playing Carl Jenkins Benedictus from The Armed Man and Mass for Peace. We will talk about the key points that caught my attention and determine what are the correct practice adjustments to make in order to achieve quick improvements. That and much more on this episode of Quick Playing Tips. Before we get into the topic, I just wanted to take a minute to wish you all happy holidays. Spend time with your loved ones and make sure to appreciate every moment. Have some fun, enjoy yourself, and don't do anything silly. With that one out of the way, I wanted to thank everyone who left comments on my last video with some really cool topic suggestions. I decided to award a gentleman by the name of Luis Thomas with a free lesson. He sent me a video of him playing and was brave enough to allow me to share it publicly with my comments in it. I picked the analysis topic not only because it will feature common issues within younger players, but also show you guys how valuable of a tool recording can be when it comes to learning. With that in mind, let's move on to the analysis part. Focus. So the video I'm about to play will feature an unaccompanied version of Benedictus by Carl Jenkins, played by a young fellow who is from England and is only 13 years old. The way we're going to work things out is by playing extracts of the video and breaking down a couple of key areas that I believe should be the focus point in his practice at the current stage of his playing. So let's have a look at the first sample. <laughs> So as you can see, this is the beginning of Benedictus. The opening is solid, full sound, and a good choice of breathing spots. This is not a professional quality audio recording, so obviously not everything will be translated precisely in terms of what we hear. Therefore, I'm going to focus purely on things that I'm certain have nothing to do with the quality of the sound. The first thing that caught my attention happens multiple times during the video. <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of you could hear the loud breath with a voice-like sound to it, as well as you probably know it's not a good sign in brass players, or generally not a good sign. So let's just quickly break down why that happens and what does that indicate us in terms of playing a brass instrument. Shall we? During the breathing process, we inhale oxygen-rich air that travels through the breathing passages to the tiny air sacs called alveoli in the lungs. Normally this is supposed to be a very quiet process unless there are certain circumstances that disturbs it, including illnesses such as asthma, allergies, and common cold. Loud breathing can also be a result of increased oxygen needs. That can take us out from the breathing under a relaxed state. It can be caused by increased heart rate due to activities such as exercise or even in an adrenaline dump in our bodies due to stress. The increased noise volume in breathing indicates that the breathing passages are narrowed or becoming obstructed as a result of inflammation or enlarged tissue. Now the point I'm trying to get across is assuming that the kid is not sick, did not just run a marathon and is not under stress recording in a comfortable home environment. Why is his breathing so labored and loud? I know most of you are already thinking, well, duh, he stands, and you would be certainly correct. But the question I want you to ask yourself instead is, why is he tense? Why is breathing an uncomfortable process for him? Would he be breathing like this if he was playing violin, piano, or even singing? Let's do a little comparison of me playing the same phrase from a similar angle. I want you to try and spot a visual aspect that would explain the reason why I'm able to take a much more relaxed and full breath under same circumstances. 
So this is a subtle difference, but it is extremely important. If you pay attention to his shoulder positioning versus mine, you would be able to notice that it almost seems like he's hugging his instrument, whereas I'm keeping mine a little bit more up straight with the weight more centered. Now I want you to try something for me here. Try tucking your shoulders and neck like this, then take a large quick breath. <gasps> now put your chest up, retract your shoulders a little bit, try to take another quick breath. Not only you should be able to hear the difference, but also feel the difference in terms of how much more air with less effort can you inhale while having an open upright posture. Similar problems are not only relevant with euphonium players, but other brass players as well, such as trumpet, trombone, and etc. Good posture is an absolute key base which will highly influence your progress in terms of airflow, sound, projection, and so on. If you played with poor posture for, let's say, 10 years or so consistently, you will absolutely become better at playing while breathing, while being crunched or tucked or so on. However, at some point you will run into limitations in your range, sound quality, stamina, and even the ability to feel comfortable under stress. At that point you will have an option to stick with the issue you have and limit your skill set or try to change it and in other words get rid of something that is now a huge habit of yours. As soon as you will start playing around with your body in later stages of your playing career, you will realize pretty much everything will have to be relearned, even your embouchure, since now you will try to change the angle of the instrument, which will result into different mouthpiece angle. Let me share with you a little personal story of mine. When I was a kid, still living in Lithuania, there were no euphonium teachers around, not a single one in the whole country. Not only that, but there weren't any brass teachers around in my town. From the age of 14 up until I went to study at the Royal Northern College of Music with Steve Mead, I studied on my own. I did not have any euphonium pieces, I didn't have many pieces in general available. All I had was an Arban book and I kid you not, I used to practice that thing for 6 to 8 hours a day every day. Nobody told me that watching TV and practicing at the same time was a bad thing and nobody told me that uh, scarred up bass is a bad sign rather than a sign of you working like a badass. I thought that if I worked really really hard I will for sure be able to audition well to study with Steve who was somebody I really looked up to at the time. Fortunately at the end I did get through audition successfully and that type of practicing led me to developing a really impressive technique which was not something common for a first year bachelor student or generally an undergraduate student. While having one of the most impressive techniques in 20 plus uh, euphonium player department, uh, the downside was that I had absolutely the worst basics out there. Terrible breathing, no concept of embouchure, bad posture, bad anxiety problems, no clue how to follow conductor, no musicianship and etc. I remember after the very first studio class where I played in front of the whole department, one of the master students came to me and said, man, once you learn how to get uh, that sound going with your technique, you're going to sound really, really impressive. 
Well, guess what? Instead of developing new skills throughout four years of my undergrad studies, I had to spend all of my time getting rid of bad habits I developed during my intense but poor practice during my teenage years. On top of that, I took off a whole year afterwards where I spent 12 months working on nothing else but basics. It sucked, but it took my playing to the point where I could finally have consistency in my performances and develop quality to my playing. Even nowadays, I keep on refining my basic skills in order to allow my other playing abilities to keep improving. The takeaway message out of this story would be that getting rid of habits is way harder than acquiring new habits. I know I got away slightly from the main topic, but I just thought you guys could find this little story useful and hopefully might uh, help you to understand how important it is to not develop bad habits at the early stages of your playing career. That being said, let me share with you exercises which will allow you to work not only on your posture, but breathing at the same time as well. Huh? What you need to understand is that there absolutely is a physical element towards holding your instrument with a good posture, especially with larger instruments such as tuba, euphonium or trombone, just to name a few. These instruments are heavy, and unless you are a fully grown man or woman, it will be harder to sustain great posture for a long period of time. The instrument is going to be huge in comparison to your limbs if you're a kid. That's why I often recommend younger guys and girls starting on a baritone rather than euphonium, or otherwise practicing mostly in a sitting position up until they become physically more fit to hold the instrument without tensing and fatiguing their shoulders. And even then there is a huge chance that you still might get fatigued shoulders in a standing position. Instruments such as euphonium are built in a way which might be extremely uncomfortable for people of certain body types. A good example would be Steve Mead. The way he distributes euphonium is by having 90% of the weight on his left hand while keeping the right hand loose for fingers to move with maximum speed and agility. On theory, that makes a lot of sense. However, it wouldn't work as well for somebody like me. First of all, Steve is left-handed, which makes him naturally want to transfer more weight towards his left hand. Secondly, he's a bit shorter, has shorter arms than I do. Allow somebody built similar to him keep the left shoulder low and relax while holding euphonium in a position which aligns the mouthpiece well to the ambusher. On top of that, every euphonium has a different lead pipe angle which will again affect the way you hold it in order to align it well with your face. With so many variables out there, we need to determine what is a good posture before we start practicing it. I'm going to show you a few quick steps which will help you to figure that out. And it will be especially important if you play a larger brass instrument since it might end up looking a little bit different from person to person depending on the height, arm length, and etc. So follow me on this one. I can't wait. 
Take your mouthpiece and find the angle where both upper and lower lip is covered equally by the mouthpiece rim and your embouchure is centered inside of the cup of the mouthpiece with the air going directly through the shank of your mouthpiece. Take a picture or have a mirror next to you so you could see how it looks. Now put your mouthpiece into your instrument and hold it in a way which will replicate the angle of the mouthpiece which you had without your instrument. Again, different instrument brands might have a bit of a different angle, so might look different to what you're looking at. Your focus point should be having a neutral neck position and good mouthpiece centering as well as balanced bottom to top connection. Now the next step is going to be finding a good lower body positioning. Spread your feet about shoulder width apart and make sure your weight is distributed equally in both legs. Try to keep more weight on the heel rather than the ball of your feet. Now start tilting slightly forward and back very slowly up until you find a positioning where most of your body weight is distributed on your legs and hips. Your stomach should feel very relaxed and breathing should feel very low and deep with little effort. Now apply all the points mentioned and you'll have a good solid posture base to start with. You'll see many great players often break these rules due to artistic side of performance or some other reasons. However, you need to develop a solid understanding of your body to start with and a good posture will allow you to achieve that in the first place. So hopefully this gives you a very detailed understanding of what is a good posture. It is the most important factor when it comes to developing a quick, relaxed, efficient and full breathing. Since we figured out a way to determine the correct posture now, it's time to put it into practice and learn how to apply it into our playing. Oh. We will start off with the simple long tones. The reason why we choose this particular exercise is because we want to emulate playing environment while focusing purely on our posture rather than playing. There is nothing easier and safer to your lips than low, long tone, so let's focus on a couple things here. Keep a good posture. Don't lose connection between mouthpiece and lips when you breathe. Take as much time as needed in order to inhale with little to none sound while staying relaxed and filling your lungs close to full capacity. Breathe through the corners of your lips in order to achieve that. As soon as you start feeling discomfort in your shoulder area, stop for a second, put your instrument down and continue where you left off after a brief rest. Incorporate this into your daily practice routine. As it will become more natural, it will directly transfer to your general playing and you will start feeling benefits very quickly. The next step is going to be controlling timing of your breath on top of everything. Don't do this unless you feel comfortable with the previous exercise and you're positive you're executing all the points I've mentioned before. It might take you 5 minutes, a day or maybe a week, whatever. Make sure to take that time to get comfortable with what I said in order not to skip any steps and again, not to develop incorrect habits. That being said, next exercise is going to be very similar except for we will time our breath. We will play long tones except for now we will put a metronome on 60 beats per minute and spend 2 beats inhaling and 6 beats playing. Keep a good posture, 
efficient breathing and make sure there's no gap between your inhale and exhale. Again, do this as a part of your regular playing routine. Spend 10-15 minutes a day but with really good focus on your posture and breathing and it will be all that it takes to develop a good habit over time. The last exercise will be a slow slur exercise and just like I've mentioned before, get comfortable with your previous two exercises before taking this next step. We'll play some low slurred fifths. The inhale is going to be one beat long. The first note we play for two beats, second note two beats as well, and the third one will be three beats, again, followed by the another one beat breath. And going chromatically down. Keep a good posture and you'll find breathing easy and relaxing. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> When you get better doing these exercises, you'll notice that all the good qualities of great posture and efficient breathing will naturally transfer to your other exercises and most importantly your pieces. You don't need to spend hours on this stuff because it will get you bored and um, as long as you spend 5, 10, 15 minutes but really quality minutes on practicing good posture basics, you will improve your sound, range and ease in no time. As always guys, thanks so much for watching, a huge shout out to Luis for having courage to send me a video for the commentary. I believe a lot of people will benefit from this and possibly start recording and analyzing themselves way more often. I will send you an email and we will schedule a lesson with some more personalized tips buddy so keep an eye for that. I will keep running this little competition for you guys since I received so many great feedback from you peeps so leave a comment down below with a topic suggestion for the next video. You don't necessarily have to send me a video or anything like that, as long as it's a topic which you believe everyone could find useful. You might end up getting a free lesson then. Otherwise, feel free to get in touch with me for some regular online teaching. I'll be doing a nice Christmas discount for you guys and girls, so find my contact details in the description box down below and shoot me an email if you're interested. For now, I really appreciate your time. If you found this video useful and informative, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. That would be a really nice Christmas present for me. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section down below my Facebook page or Twitter. If you believe I missed out something important or you disagree with what I've said, I will welcome a friendly discussion down in the comment section box below. For those who'd like to meet me in person and hear me play, I will be featured as a guest artist in the ITEA SC Artec Conference in Edinburgh, Texas on March 16th to 18th. I will do a whole recital of brand new work, so check the link down below for the event and make sure to come say hi and hear me playing. For now, 
Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you, my friends. Stay safe, work hard, and keep motivated. Till the next time.